Good morning, and welcome to the NCSS Parent University. My name is Dr. Jennifer Williams, and I'm the Instructional Technology Coordinator. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Adam Fial, Director of Technology and Media Services. Today, we will give you an overview of the tools your children will be using in school this year. We will also share resources that you may use to enhance their learning experience, as well as keep them safe while in their virtual environment. So sit back, take notes, and let's get started. So our agenda for today, we're going to talk about my launch pad, Canvas, Infinite Campus, Zoom, ClassWise, and a little bit about internet safety. So first up, my Launchpad. My Launchpad is our single sign-on portal. If you have had a child in our school system last year, you are probably familiar with an SSO such as Clever. This year, we're no longer using Clever. We're using My Launchpad. If you are using an NCSS issued device, when you first log into your machine, My Launchpad is the landing page. If you aren't using an NCSS issue device, go to launchpad.classlink.com backslash Newton GA. Then both groups can simply log in using your student sign or credentials. So the first step to having a great school year is being able to access the tools provided. And that all begins with logging into my Launchpad. So let's take a minute or two to discuss how you log into my Launchpad. First, you type in your username. So our username is your last name, first initial of your first name, first initial of your middle name, the two digit birth month, and the two digit birth date. For example, if your child's name was Jewel Alicia Williams, then it would be her last name, Williams, the first initial of her first name, the first initial of her middle name, and her two-digit birth month, so January is one, so it would be zero one, and then the two-digit birth date, 24. The password is your student's lunch number. Elementary students' lunch numbers are the same thing as their student number. Secondary students can change their password, so your child may have changed their password um, and they would know their um, own personal password. If you don't know your child's lunch number, of course you can contact the teacher, but I will also show you a little later when we get to Infinite Campus where you can go ahead and get that lunch number from. So as parents, we also know and understand the struggle of getting little ones to log into the computer and to other applications. That is why students in grades pre-K through third will utilize Quick Cards to access My Launchpad. A Quick Card is a card with a QR code on it that will send your child's credentials to My Launchpad for automated sign-in. So don't worry, there'll be no tears, no struggle, just a quick way to help them log in. Please keep these cards in a safe place for daily use. I know my daughter used the quick cart last year and I put it in a baggie so that it was safe all year long and I can scan right through the baggie. So we said that my launch pad is a single sign on. All you have to do is click and launch and you'll be able to launch textbooks, digital tools and other resources. This is the landing page of my launch pad. So when your student signs in, it looks something like this. Now, of course, each landing page has tools that your student has access to based on their school's choice of purchase programs and the student's grade level band. So for example, if your student is a high school student, they probably won't have Brain Pop Junior because that's not appropriate for the grade level band. Your student will also have access to their own textbooks. So if they use McGraw or if they use Huffley Mifflin, then their textbooks will be accessible here as well. They have access to their Google Drive going directly here. So it will log them into the Google Drive 
into the same thing for any of the Google Suite products. Since my Launchpad is a single sign-on, all you simply do is point to access the academic resources and you're auto-signed into the platform. So here are all the tools, including Canvas. So next up, Canvas. Canvas is our learning management system. How do you get to Canvas? Well, just like I said before, you go to my Launchpad. When you go to my Launchpad, you click on Canvas and you'll be signed in. So Canvas is our learning management system. It's the hub of our network where teaching and learning takes place for authentic engagement. It's where your student gets their assignments created by their teachers, where they participate in engaging classroom discussions with their peers, and where they take quizzes and other types of assessments. The grades that they receive in Canvas this year will be imported directly into Infinite Campus for better parent-teacher communication. So here's Canvas. This is what the icon looks like. And that's where your student will get their assignments, discussions, and quizzes. When your student logs into Canvas, they see their dashboard. Here's the dashboard. The dashboard houses their course cards. These are the course cards. And of course, they'll have more. They'll have science, social studies, reading, um, any other courses, music, PE, whatever other courses that are here, they'll see all of these. The dashboard also houses the calendar, the Canvas email box. So if they have a question or a comment or want to say something to their teachers, they can directly inbox the teachers like an email housed within Canvas. And they can access their grades. So if they want to know what they got on a particular assignment, then when the teacher marks it, the grades will be here. They can view the grades. As a parent, you too have access to Canvas. You will have access to your students' courses, grades, and calendars. You do not have access to their discussions, to their assignments or quizzes. So how do you get to see all this stuff within Canvas? Well, you have to download the Canvas Parent app in your iOS or Android devices. There are three Canvas apps. There's a teacher app, there's a student app, and there's a parent app. So be sure that you're downloading the correct parent app, which is blue, and it looks like this. When you click find a school, you're not gonna actually type in your child's school. So I wanted to make sure that we let you know that. You're gonna type in Newton, and when you type in Newton, Newton County School System Parents. This is what you want to type in or click on to access it. Don't click on any of these other ones because we don't know where Canova City Schools are at or any of these other schools. You want to go to Newton County School System Parents. Then you want to create an account. So this final step is complicated. So I want to take a couple of seconds to talk you through it. Since Canvas builds in various levels of security, it requires you to add your information as well as a peering code from your student's account. You can do this by going to your student's account. So you go to, they log in on the top, you see the account. You go down to the left-hand side and you click on settings. After you click on settings, you're gonna go to the right side of the screen where it says pair with an observer. When you click that button, it's going to give you a secret code. You're going to copy that code and you're going to put it into this part, student's peering code. So you're going to put your name, your email address, you're going to put your password twice, and then you're going to put your student's peering code. If you can't remember what I'm saying, don't worry. When you click this, it's going to tell you what the peering code is and how you can get it. And I'm going to show you another way that you can do this. Of course, you have to accept the terms of privacy. And then you'll have access to the parent app. 
and you'll be connected with your child or children. So as a parent, you have access a lot to a lot of information. So, and I know I'm sharing a lot of information to you with you this morning, and I don't want you to be overwhelmed. I want you to know that you're free to review this and other important information anytime in a newly created course made just for you, the parent. The course is called Parent Connect. On Parent Connect, you can find videos and step-by-step -step guides to help you navigate our virtual tools all year long. So how about we go in and take a quick look at it? So I am in Parent Connect. If you'll notice, when you land in the page, it's going to give you a series of modules. There's a module on the virtual experience, on how to use Zoom, on how to use the Infinite Campus Parent Portal, which we'll talk about next, how to use my Launchpad, which we kind of talked about at the beginning, but it'll give you step-by-step -step information if you need it. And it will give you the Title I Continuous Parent and Communication page, the Acceptable Use Policy, information on internet safety, information on social and emotional learning. And we'll talk about this last piece, help, in a second. So first, let's go and look what a model looks like, a module looks like. So this is the Canvas module. When I click the Canvas module, and I want to know information about the parent app, I can simply Go down to parent app and click on that. It will take me to the parent app page and the information I just shared with you about the parent code will be there. So let's look, parent app. We have the directions in Spanish and also in English. So these are the step-by-step -step directions and a video to go along so that you can see exactly what I showed you um, on your own time frame. So that's how you use the parent app. It's going to show you how to get there, how to pair with your student, and how to download it to your phone. I'm going to go back to the home page. There is a module on the Newton virtual learning experience. We know that right now that um, our students are going back in a virtual um, capacity. So we want to make sure that you have information to help you get started. So you'll learn about the Newton virtual experience overview. We'll also tell you how to get started with the virtual learning checklist. We're giving you information about academic honesty, the code of conduct, which is the student handbook for all three bands, elementary, sec, middle, and high school. And with the student grading policy and the attendance policy. There are also some tips, tips and tricks there for you so that if you just want to know a little bit something extra, go ahead and use this. I strongly suggest that you go through module one so that you'll be fully prepared on September 8th. And of course, anything that we show you today, just in case it um, is not clear, you can go back and click any of the links and they'll take you to the information you need. I want to make sure that I, let me just refresh this for a second. There we go, looks pretty. I want to make sure that I make reference to this very important module here. It's the Title I Continuous Parent Communication module. It takes you to a website created by Dr. Kara Richardson, the Parent and Family Engagement Coordinator. And it's going to give you everything you need to know for as far as Title I and tips and tricks to work with your child, um, not only in face-to-face, -face, but also in a virtual learning. So you might want to check this out. I'm going to share Dr. Richardson's parent information, um, her contact information with you right after this. You also have um, this module about social emotional learning. When you click on the link, it will take you to Rethink Ed. And the director of this program is Dr. is Miss Amy Cummings. And she can be um, contacted also if you have any questions. But most importantly, I want to take you to this module, the HELP module. So when we're in the first two weeks of school and we are not sure exactly what's going on and something um, 
happens, you get kicked out of a program, you're not sure how to use something, where can you go to find help? Well, that should not be a puzzle. So that's why this help page was made specifically to give you support. So we have this um, matrix here of who can help you. So if you have a problem, most of the time, your first line of contact is going to be the teacher. But sometimes it's not going to be the teacher. Sometimes you actually need technical support. So there's the problem. And here are the two columns to say, hey, who should help you? So if you're having an issue with your Chromebook or a hotspot that's not working properly, even today, you can go ahead and contact technical support. So how do you do that? Well, I'm going to scroll on down. Here are the tech support email addresses for every school. So each school has a dedicated tech support specialist who's going to be working to help you solve your problems. So if your child goes to Eastside High School, then you're going to email this tech support email address. And then they'll directly help you. You'll know there's somebody from your school who will be working with you to get your problem solved. So let's summarize. This Parent Connect page was made specifically with you in mind to give you guides and resources to help you get the year started and to use throughout the year. It will be updated periodically to make sure that it has the most available information. If you need help getting started with virtual learning, um, then you can click the help button. This help button is going to take you to the name and the email address of who you need to contact for more help. If you want to get your child started and you don't want to wait till September 8th, which I suggest you strongly don't wait till September 8th, go ahead and get them started a little bit every day now and click here for the student orientation course. This course is going to teach your child how to log in. It's going to, well, they'll already be logged in, but it's going to teach them how to answer um, a discussion, answer a question, how to um, look and take a quiz, how to find people. It's gonna just help them navigate through everything in Canvas so they can have a smooth transition. There is a little bit of homework we have for you parents. So when you click on modules, I wanna show you this, but each child will be assigned an assignment. It's the first week getting to know Canvas module. And I want you to look at it for a moment. So this assignment is going to be pushed out to all students in Newton County. And we're um, asking that they all fill it out so that we know that they're able to um, access the materials easily and they're able to um, answer the questions and the teachers can have access to it. So please do that by Monday. So this module gives you a brief welcome. It gives your students a discussion question to answer. How do you feel about coming back to school? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Are you worried? And why do you feel this way? They're going to go ahead and reply to that discussion. The same thing, they're going to take a quick three question quiz and they're going to go ahead, and maybe it's one question. It's a quick quiz that they're going to take and the teacher's going to go ahead and make sure that she can see their submissions. And then also the same thing for assignments. It's going to allow them to do an assignment. It's a quick assignment. What are your thoughts about Canvas so far? Do you like it? What do you like best? Are you trying to still figure it out? What are you still confused about? So it gives the teacher a little bit of insight on how their students are feeling about Canvas. So this assignment is going to be assigned to them from their homeroom teachers. So they'll get the information and it will be an assignment waiting for them um, from their home teachers in Canvas. Okay, so that was all about the Parent Connect. So many people asked in the last session, well, how do I get to Parent Connect? I just wanna take a second to show you. So when you go to newtoncountyschools.org, so that's our district website, you're going to go to the Parent button. And once you're in the parent button, you're going to scroll, scroll, scroll down to the bottom where it says 2020 Virtual Parent University. You're going to click on the 2020 Virtual Parent University. 
and the tab that you click on, Parent University, will take you to the Parent Connect page. Okay, thank you. Okay, so next we're going to be talking about Infinite Campus. Whew. So our Infinite Campus Parent Portal is our student information system. Here you can access grade information, student attendance, and documents such as report cards and the daily schedule. So this is where Remember earlier when I told you about your student's lunch number and I said you can contact the teacher, but you can also get your child's lunch number in the parent portal. So here's your student, there's their name, and then right underneath their name is their student number, which is also their lunch number. You'll also have access to their daily schedule. So I'll let you know the schedule. It'll also give you information about any assignments that are due from Canvas. So if the teacher's made an assignment in Canvas and it's a graded assignment, then it will also post here within the parent portal. You can go to documents and when you're on documents, you can access their report card from last year. If you have more than one child, no worries. You don't have to have multiple accounts. You can have access to all your children by clicking the drop down box. And you click the box and it's going to give you all the children. So if you have two children, Andrew student and Lydia student, then you will be able to toggle between Andrew's information and Lydia's information. This year, you can update your contact information directly in the parent portal. So you can change your email address and your phone number and even your address right here within the parent portal. The Infinite Campus Student Information System is part of the Student Services Department. The Director of the Student Services Department is Mr. Darren Berry. Here is his email information if you have any questions, comments, or concerns regarding Infinite Campus. So next up is Zoom. I am going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Adam Fall. He will go ahead and take us on and talk about Zoom and class-wise. Thank you, Dr. Williams, for that great session so far. Uh, and as uh, Dr. Williams stated, we have a lot of resources uh, for everyone out there. So um, if you are watching on YouTube, just know that I've added the links in the description. Um, as my daughter says, as she watches her YouTube for kids videos, um, the links in the description below. Uh, so make sure that you check out those additional links in the description. And we do have a link for questions. So if you are having any questions uh, up to this point, you can go ahead and start asking those into the Google form. We'll try to address as many of those at the conclusion of our session today. So once again, in the description on the YouTube video, there has a link for questions. We've also added the direct links to the sites that Dr. Williams has mentioned earlier and a few of the sites that I'll be mentioning as well. The links are in the description on the YouTube channel. All right, so Zoom. This is something that I think a lot of us have uh, got to know over the past few months, whether you're talking about academic uh, work, some of us have gone to Zoom church, uh, some of us have had failure unions and things of that nature utilizing Zoom. And so this is in the platform of choice of our, of our faculty and of our teachers and of our family. So we're going to be utilizing this and uh, we're gonna talk about how we're going to utilize Zoom and support teaching and learning. So Zoom, as we all know, is a conferencing tool. It allows students to connect with their teachers and peers and counselors. We have occupational therapists, graduation coaches, 
And the session that we're doing today, even though it's being streamed on YouTube, we're utilizing Zoom right now for the actual presentation component. So it's a very powerful tool that we're going to be utilizing. So one of the things I want everyone to be aware of with Zoom is it has the ability to also do audio. So teachers can provide families with the conference number and security code. So if you are having internet issues, you can actually phone in and listen to the actual teacher and the class session. So it's a really great platform to allow multiple ways of communication uh, by do, do, utilizing audio through your phone. And this often happens if you may have an unstable internet connection, which it happens no matter where you are. Uh, and this is something that we want everyone to understand. We know that right now, everyone is trying to figure this out. Um, I don't know about you, but this is my first pandemic. I wasn't around in 1918, uh, but we're gonna try to make the most, most out of this current situation that we have right now. So as we have students that are trying to access uh, their virtual learning space via Zoom, if they are disconnected or having any, any trouble getting connected, rest assured your child will not be marked absent from their classroom. Uh, just make sure that there is a line of communication between the parent or student and teacher so they know that you're having some difficulty getting connected on that day or whatever the case may be and we will work things out. So it's, it's one of those things we encourage everyone to be there for their synchronous portion of class. But if something happens, once again, please just communicate that with your teacher because things happen. We know whether it's on your side or our side, and we'll do our best to work those things out. All right, so let's talk about some of the tools that students and teachers will see within the platform of Zoom. Um, and as you go down through here, you have your mute and unmute. Uh, all teachers will have this set up where students will enter in their sessions with their mic muted. And we encourage everyone to keep their mic muted in the Zoom session, unless you have something to say, because then you pick up a lot of different background noise and things of that nature in your session. Uh, you can start and stop your video. Uh, students are not required to have their videos on. Uh, we do encourage videos to be on so everyone can see your smiling face and all that wonderful uh, bit of information, but sometimes it can be a distraction. So you do not have to have your videos on. Uh, it's not a requirement. We just ask that, it, it, that you do have those. Now, number three, security. You see a, a strike through in security? Well, just understand that the reason that is, is students won't have the ability to change their security settings. We'll, uh, we'll explain that in, in a moment. Uh, participant. This is where they can see all the participants that are within their session and also have the opportunity to uh, contact directly to the teacher utilizing our chat feature. So they can chat directly to their teacher and ask a, a personal question if they need um, it within that meeting. The share screen, the teachers have the ability to allow students to share or not share uh, in a Zoom meeting. In most cases, the teachers will not be allowing students to share unless there is something that uh, specifically the student is working on that is going to be for the greater good of the class. But students do not have the ability to automatically just share what's on their screen to the entire classroom. Uh, the uh, polling, the teacher has the ability to poll to get immediate feedback from students and the teacher has the ability to record their sessions. And uh, we're encouraging our teachers to record their class sessions and then post those later on Canvas for viewing later. There is the ability for the end user to turn on closed captioning. So they can turn on the closed captioning and it's real time uh, closed captioning. And it's not 100% accurate, but it gets you in the right direction and you're able to understand what's being said. Uh, the next option we have are breakout rooms. This is something that uh, you may have heard Ms. Brooke Ramsey discuss during our special education parent connect session. Um, and teachers will be utilizing this in special education settings in our gifted classroom and just in the regular educational setting. It allows them to break up the class into smaller subgroups to have various discussions and work on problems together. And teachers are able to hop in and out of the multiple Zoom uh, breakout rooms that we're having there and ending the meeting and leaving the meeting. Students can leave the meeting, but note that we know when students leave versus when they're disconnected and teachers have the ability to end the meeting for all. So we won't have to worry about students being in the Zoom room without supervision. Teachers are able to end those meetings in a timely fashion. And some things I wanna mention about Zoom security. Uh, we often have heard things on the news about uh, unwanted visitors uh, in, interloping uh, into our Zoom meetings. Well, we have some things set in place. Our Zoom meetings can be set up within Canvas. 
So by having meetings set up within Canvas, students must access or authenticate through Canvas first, and then they can get to the Zoom link. So the Zoom links won't be published just all willy nilly on the website for anybody to find. And also we're working on having all of our students be uh, have to sign in to Zoom in order to access a Zoom meeting. So they'll be utilizing their Newton County information to access our Zoom meetings. Once they are able to do that, then they'll have only access to the resources that, that they need. And so we won't have any unwanted visitors being able to access our, our Zoom meetings utilizing uh, the link. So once they are in Zoom, they have the ability to raise their hand and this lets the teacher know that, hey, I have a question. They'll have to click on participants and then they have the option to see their, see their name and raise their hand. Teacher can, a teacher can see who has their hand raised and then take time to unmute that student and then hear what they have to say or ask them to type their question into the chat. Students can also give immediate feedback such as yes, no, or they can ask the teacher to slow down a little bit or go a little faster. They're like, hey, we know this, you speed this thing up. And so there's some really great tools or resources we have within Zoom that we are uh, gonna be utilizing. Uh, the next piece that I wanna discuss is called ClassWise. And this is a part of our content filter. All of our Chromebooks are equipped with uh, LineWise, which is our content filter that allows all users to have a safe, uh, browsing uh, web experience on site and off site. And that's uh, going to be in all of our district uh, deployed devices. Now, ClassWise is a tool that allows teachers to really see what's going on on student devices and allows them to focus students on the work that they need to be working on. Sometimes, you know, we, we know our students, they can get distracted by things and find some other things on the web to start looking at. Well, ClassWise will allow the teacher to see what a student is working on, redirect them, or focus or send everyone to a website that they need to be working on in that current moment. And so we're really excited about uh, what this tool is and how it can be utilized in the classroom. And I have a brief video that we're, I'm going to show so you can see uh, what's, what ClassWise is all about and how uh, it can be used in our, in our classrooms. ClassWise enables teachers to view, monitor, and control digital learning activities in the classroom. Teachers can create classes and groups of students, schedule lesson times, and manage classroom internet use. The Usage Dashboard shows students, apps and websites, unique activity, and blocked sites. Teachers can drill down to see class or individual student internet use. Student internet access can easily be focused to specific applications for a set duration. Teachers can also create internet rules that are automatically applied when the class is in session. In this example, class internet has been blocked, but educational apps and websites are allowed. For Chromebooks, the Screens page shows screen captures of student devices. For other devices, a list of currently active apps and websites is shown. Teachers can block an app for a specific student or disabled internet access for students. ClassWise enables teachers to reward engaged online behavior, address inappropriate internet use, and focus student attention to lesson relevant applications and websites. To learn more about ClassWise, visit linewise.com. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what LineWise, uh, ClassWise is all about and how we're gonna be able to utilize that resource in our classrooms. All right, the next piece that we wanna talk about is internet safety. Internet safety is a very important issue. This is something that it was an issue even before the pandemic and now that we're going through one right now, uh, it's more so because we're doing more things virtually. Uh, we're more on the computer more, we're on our cell phones and things of that nature. So we're really, uh, we've really been stressing internet safety in our school system even prior to this uh, virtual learning experience. And the one thing that I wanna make sure everyone is aware of, internet safety isn't just a school concern. We wanna make sure that everyone is doing their part to help support internet safety because there's some bad actors out there. We wanna make sure that everyone stays safe on the internet. So to do that, uh, we're gonna be utilizing some really great resources through Common Sense Media. And, I, and that the link to Common Sense Media is in the 
uh, description in the video. So if you want to get directly to where I am, it, it's going to be there. But I'm going to pull up a few resources so you can kind of see what we're talking about uh, for Common Sense Media. Oh, let me go back real quick. So... For Common Sense Media, they have some really great resources in our Family uh, Teacher Center. You have back to school guides for families, uh, resources for teachers, uh, equity, social justice, internet access and devices, uh, family services. We can drill down and really find some really great things that we can do in these uh, various applications. They're broken down by pledge for K through five, six, 12. And one of the things that I really like about common sense media is that they focus the resources on on your students based on their grade and age. So you're getting content that's very age appropriate for your students. So you can talk about various uh, parent controls. I know some parents have bought new devices for their kids. And so how can you keep your students safe? Well, you have the ability to do that, but you may not know. So on this, if you go to this you, parents guides to parent controls, it talks about the various tools and resources that are built within those applications that you can use to support your student. So, and they do have it in other languages as well. And it breaks down, okay, how can you block websites? How can you filter? How can you, what, what filters can, uh, can you put on your child's phone, whether they have an iOS or an Apple device or a tablet, tablet through Android? Um, Snapchat. So these are things that are, are greater than just the virtual learning that we're doing. It allows you as a parent to see all the things that's going on. So definitely utilize this resource, whether you're talking about right now in this space or outside, definitely take some time to figure out how you can support your child utilizing uh, common sense media. And as a parent, as a parent myself of three kids, I've utilized this resource multiple times to, to stay abreast of things that are going on in the world of digital media. All right, so the next tool we wanna to talk about uh, after Common Sense Media is gonna be our Parent Connect. As we mentioned earlier, this is where we are adding resources uh, every day. I, I encourage parents, uh, the link is in the description and is also on the website. This is one I encourage you to add to your, to your web browser as a favorite, uh, go back. Uh, it will help you support your student. And there's also a student orientation course as well. So if you wanna support your student, in this process, definitely have them go through that student orientation course as well. But these resources are updated as things change, as we get more information, because we all understand this is a very fluid situation that we're in right now. And we're trying to make sure that we have all that information current and it's out there. Um, as always, we, we posted this earlier and I put the link in the description for virtual learning support. Uh, we have virtual learning emails to contact each school. Uh, they have a dedicated team that's going to be able to support you. Uh, we have a phone number that will start uh, answering those calls next week through the, the workday and be able to help support you as well. So definitely use the tech support email addresses that we have there for your uh, school and we will do our, our best to communicate and answer any questions that arise. But as Dr. Williams mentioned earlier, if it's a question specific to what's going on in your classroom, we definitely encourage you to email that the teacher directly because if it's something about an assignment that a teacher gave, the teacher will probably be able to give you a better answer versus the tech support on that because we're probably gonna have to then ask the teacher uh, what the question is referring to. So definitely you know, go to your teacher, but if you're having a question about your technology that you have, your hotspot that you have, utilize those uh, email addresses that you see. And like I said, if you can't see it on the screen, if you go to the description, there is a link for technology support. It'll take you to the website that has all those email addresses listed out for you. Um, I know uh, this is a question that was asked earlier about picking up devices. Uh, we've had a, a high demand for devices in some school sites. They did run out of uh, Chromebook devices for deployment and you're asked to fill out a form. Uh, the technology team is actually working this weekend right now as I speak and going through that list and trying to secure additional devices. So please expect the call 
either sometime this weekend or Monday or Tuesday from the technology department, from the uh, technician at your child's school to come by and pick up a device. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to meet the need for hotspots because there's just not enough of those in stock right now. And so we are working to try to uh, secure some more of those and to meet those needs. But we are working, we did receive a grant from the state. And so we will be able to uh, put up wireless access points at various locations throughout the county. We're working with some, uh, the YMCA's and child care facilities to uh, be able to create those spaces as well. So we're trying our best to provide access to as many families as we can in this uh, very awkward situation that we've been put in. So as I stated earlier, um, we're all in this together, everybody, and we're trying to uh, do our best to work to make the best out of the situation that we are currently in right now. And so with that being said, we're gonna open up for a few questions. So uh, we do have the link in the descriptions for questions. And Dr. Williams, if you don't mind joining me. I'm we'll here. Be, all right, there you go. We'll be able to answer a few questions um, as they're coming in. Okay, so I see one. Do students need to attend the entire open house session for their school? or will they be recorded so they can e hear each teacher's session? That's a great question. Well, we strongly encourage students to attend open house, but sometimes they have multiple teachers, so it's hard to attend the meetings at the same time. So we are encouraging teachers to record their sessions, but each school will make that determination on their own. I'm sure they will. And we'll make sure that we put a note to that. So we'll send it out to teachers and ask them to do that for you. All right, someone is saying uh, there is ClassLink ready for us to sign into. Both of my children are getting an error message for their user ID and password are not correct. If you are having an issue signing in, uh, please utilize the virtual learning support email and email that in and they will be able to walk you through that process. Uh, your login information is going to be the same login information that you use to sign into the computer. So just the first part of your uh, sign in, not the full email address, it's the first part and uh, you'll be able to utilize your student number for your password. So make sure you uh, utilize the documentation that we have online. And if that's still not working for you, feel free to email tech support. Someone will be in contact with you to walk you through that process. Okay, here's another question. How do I get the student quick card? I could do that one. Okay, in order to get your students quick card, they have to be in grades pre-K through three. If they are in pre-K through three, then you can contact the teacher and the teacher can print out the quick card for you and, or they can email it to you directly. Hmm. Is there a specific browser you recommend using Chrome versus Edge? Yes, that's a great question. Chrome is the browser of choice. So, Yes, I'm glad you um, asked that question. We use Chrome. Chrome works seamlessly with Canvas, whereas Edge does not allow you to use the full capabilities. So please use your Chrome browser. Great question. All right, someone says my child's uh, Canvas account does not show any courses and unable to complete the first assignment due on the 31st. Um, how can I view the, his courses? All right. Um, if you are not seeing any courses, uh, one, I would say, please email the, uh, if you know your child's teacher at this point, you can email your child's teacher to make sure that they have published the course for your student. Or you can also email the tech support for your uh, school and we will do what we can to redirect that email or, or find out what that solution is. And we are encouraging you to get it done by the 31st. But as I said, we're going to be, we're, we're as patient as possible with everyone. So it, nothing's bad is going to happen if you don't have it done by the 31st. We really want to have it done so the teachers can have the opportunity to reach out to the students and families who are having issues and help them out. Because that gives us enough time between the, uh, the 31st and the, and the 8th, which is our first day of school, to provide the necessary support that everyone may need to get involved and get logged in. So definitely uh, let people know, let us know if you have any questions or any concerns so we can help you out and, and get you going. We don't, we don't want anybody to feel stressed out. So I know uh, Dr. Williams may have said this earlier, we do not want you to be stressed out. 
Hey, right. This is a stressful time right now. I, as I said earlier, I have three students, uh, three kids, two of them in Newton County, myself. So I, I definitely understand the stress that everyone's under during this current time period. But definitely, if you're having issues, reach out to tech support or contact your child's teacher and uh, we'll be able to walk you through the process. Hmm. Okay, here's a good question. With Canvas, is there a way to add multiple students like Infinite Canvas? Yes, there is a way for you to access for all the students in your household, um, just like in Infinite Canvas. The directions are on our um, Parent Connect page. If you go to Canvas, it shows you how to um, access multiple students. Right. Someone asked, how can I act? How do we access my launch pad? Uh, there is a the link uh, in the description in the video uh, to access my launch pad. So if you are on YouTube, if you look in the description, you should see a link that will take you there. And your access credentials for a student will be the same information that they utilize to sign into the computer. Um, and that will give them access to uh, my launch pad. So here's another question regarding class-wise. Is it only for use with the Chromebooks loaned by the schools? Okay. Uh, no, you can utilize class-wise at home if the student opens up the Chrome web browser and signs into Chrome using their Newton County credentials. Then the teacher will be able to uh, assist students in using class-wise and redirect them and push out resources that they need during the class period. Oh, this question, there's a lot of questions coming in. Let me see if I can get. Someone wants to know uh, who can assist them in setting up the, the device. Uh, I'm not sure which device they're referring to. Your, your district device should already be set up once the student signs in uh, to the Chromebook and being able to launch uh, my launch pad. Uh, but if you are having any technical issues, uh, please contact the tech support at your child's school and someone will try to get with you as soon as uh, possible. I know uh, the team was deploying devices most of this week, so they are a little behind on, on the email support. And uh, we are working, uh, as I said, right now and through the weekend to try to get caught up with some of these emails. So uh, I do have to say that I have a really great team that's out there that's doing the best that they can um, in this uh, situation that we're in. So they are working as we speak to try to answer some of these emails and get caught up so we can make sure that we're trying to give people uh, as support as soon as humanly possible. Okay, someone asked a question, how is Parent Canvas different from Parent Infinite Canvas? That's a great question. Parent Infinite Canvas is the student information system. So it includes information such as your child's address, your name, your phone number, um, your students' um, information as far as their schedule, their last report cards. You can't access that information within Canvas. You can only access that information within Infinite Canvas. What is in Canvas is their course information, meaning information that the teacher creates and posts within the learning management system. So Infinite Campus includes a lot of personal information, whereas Parent Canvas includes a lot of student information as far as what the teacher creates and generates and the students go back and forth. It's a communication tool, whereas the other one is a um, information tool that houses data. And a lot of the other questions are repeat questions, similar um, in nature that I'm seeing. So Dr. Williams, question for you. If I just logged in right now, what could I do? If you just logged into this meeting right now? Yes. Well, everything that we talked about is really housed in the Parent Connect. So Parent Connect is your one-stop shop to resources for Newton County Schools. It's information on how to access your student information, how to access your course information, and how to use the tools available for the 2020-2021 school year. So this is where you should go 
for if you just logged in now, if you forget what I say tomorrow and you want to go back and that you will use all year. Yep. So please check those out. And the great thing about this session, it was recorded and you can view it again. And we're going to do this all over again in about 10 more minutes. So if you <laughs> want to watch it again, um, you can watch this one once it's posted, but we're going to do the same session at 11 a.m. So please uh, tell your mama, tell your brother, tell your sister, tell your cousin, <laughs> tell your friend uh, to hop on and watch our Parent Connect. Um, we want to make sure that everyone feels comfortable and ready to start our upcoming school year. Thank you. All right, have a great day, everybody.